hey, got a question from Yoast a while back about super maximal eccentrics and how to implement them in training. Are they necessary? Um, that being super maximal eccentrics for jumpers. So, um, kind of a complicated question. There's a lot of strength coaches that go a lot of different ways with this. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where um, training, the best training is simple. Uh, yes, um, super maximal eccentric work. Um, you're definitely giving a big dose of something in the training bucket that's not all that simple. Um, high CNS demand, very intensive. Um, also room for some good gains, especially in the strength arena. But the question is, is it worth it? Uh, number one. Uh, and then two, how do I go about implementing that in my training? So um, in the first place, I'll admit um, I haven't you know, in my training myself, my athletes, I haven't been um, too big on super maximal work. I've used it at small pockets here and there. Uh, last year a little bit, uh, towards the end of kind of a big time strength cycle, leading up to a pretty good squat numbers, uh, pretty good standing vertical numbers. Um, so, you know, I have a little experience with it. I know some strength coaches that use it in base strength cycles to good effect and, and what have you. So, uh, but I also know if, you know, there's probably for every strength coach that uses it, there's uh, quite a good handful more, or, or especially in the track arena, who don't use it and you know produce world champions. So it's certainly something that you don't absolutely need, um, but it's something that can be useful. So without rabbit trailing too far, uh, let's just get into that real quick. So uh, what are the benefits of super maximal like squatting for you know vertical jump, getting stronger? Uh, the main one is tension. Okay. Uh, you're going to experience a lot of tension over a long period of time. Uh, jumping in itself, you're going to have massive amounts of tension, especially plyometrics, uh, multiple times body weight. The main difference between that and squatting is that when I am jumping, that super tension level is only existent for a very small period of time, a few tenths of a second at most. Whereas if I'm doing a super maximal squat, there's a great breadth or magnitude of that tension, so I'm experiencing high tension over a long period of time. Um, this is very taxing to the body, uh, but it also has the benefits of uh, increasing strength, improving the power of the uh, nervous system output to the muscles, recruitment. Uh, it also stimulates like some fast twitch uh, or some satellite cells around fast twitch muscle. It's one of the ways uh, that you can accomplish that. So um, it's very powerful, but and it also creates some good adaptations, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the downside, uh, one, it's slow, okay? So it has a lot of good things, but it's something that's very slow. Uh, on top of that, being slow, it's not very specific necessarily. Um, there's high tension, but it's a very slowly produced high tension. You know, jumping, sprinting, that's ballistic. Um, the eccentric phase of jumping and sprinting is actually more of an explosive isometric phase. Usually you're gonna hit the ground, your legs will hit the ground, in near the position of the bottom range. Okay, so if I'm jumping and I'm, you know, running and jumping, my feet, you know, when my feet go hit the ground, they don't, the eccentric is very small. It's almost like you're going to hit dead bottom isometric and then explode up. Okay, so um, that eccentric is cool, but it might not be that specific necessarily. It can be. Okay, I'm, I'm not saying that's not, but if you look at a lot of jumps, it's more like an explosive isometric than a prolonged ESA, or even a rapid eccentric. I mean, there's some rapid, but it's certainly not prolonged. Okay, uh, I have to look at a little cheat sheet because this is something that I really kind of had to note out and think about a little bit. Okay, so uh, how do I train athletes and how does this relate? Like, ooh, how would this relate to my philosophy? Uh, I, I kind of, when I train athletes, I really follow the philosophies of two guys, and clearly this philosophy is a lot of other coaches too, but... Uh, Charlie Francis and uh, Bondarchuk, and the things I get from them are, uh, with Charlie Francis especially, is it simple and is it trackable, okay? Um, so when it comes to something as powerful as super maximal stuff, it's not that simple, simple and it certainly makes training a little more complicated because you're dumping something extremely intense in there you know, to provoke an adaptation. Uh, but it makes your training a little more confusing, okay? Uh, it might be worth it, but it might not be. And then uh, with Bondarchuk, uh, the big thing with Bondarchuk is actually that, you know, and, well, Charlie Francis too, is that strength training is complementary and that you don't want to overload something that's complementary, okay? So um, jumping higher strength is very important, but it's not the most important thing. I mean, it is linked to, like, you know, standing vertical pretty heavily, 
but going beyond that, um, it's going to have a lot less uh, transfer over. And uh, even within standing vertical, it's important to be doing jumping itself files, uh, etc. Okay, and by overloading or putting too much emphasis on the strength piece, even if you do need to get stronger, you are you can hinder yourself over time. Um, there needs to be a balance, and if you're trying to be explosive, your body needs that explosive ability. And you know, uh, a lot of people will say, "Okay, well, you just need to get stronger." Sure, you know, and, and some people do. But the majority of the athletes I've talked to, every time they do a strength only phase, it really impedes them. And it's really impeded me too. And believe it or not, I'm actually myself, I'm less strong when all I do is lift. I, I need you know, sprinting and jumping and, you know, plyos to get strong just because that explosiveness feeds uh, my system and I can lift more. Okay, that said, try not to make this too long. Okay, gotta look at my cheat sheet real quick. Uh, so what do I think about super maximal stuff? Uh, I would consider it kind of a nitrous fuel type type thing, in the sense if you don't want to use it often, it's going to give you a little boost. If you do even use it at all, um, it should show up maybe in two week periods at most. Okay, so maybe for every three to four or two to three months, sorry, cycle of training, you might want to dump two weeks worth of it in. I wouldn't put any more than that in. Uh, one, so it can be fresh. Okay, your body can be ready to adapt to it. But, you know, I found that the body can only really handle super intense stuff for two weeks at a time. So you really got to watch it. Okay. Uh, one or another thing too is I only put it in if you know you need strength. Okay. So if, if you're already pretty strong, um, just keep focusing on maintaining a balance, doing the things you need to do with running, jumping, um, and then strength is secondary. So since strength is secondary, you don't need to worry about that. You're just going to confuse yourself to the point that it's it's just another piece to have to look after, okay? And and the best training is simple, and it's you bringing out the best of what your body, which your body is very intelligent, bringing out what your body can do, and not trying to overcomplicate or cerebralize, if that's a word, things by trying to manage a bunch of extra variables. Okay, um, one last look at my uh, cheat sheet here. <laughs> oh, last thing, okay. So, uh, if you want to use it, small doses, okay, um, those small doses, I would recommend that those are using complex, okay, since, since the super maximal is slow, use it in complex, complex with something that's fast, and, you know, you, I'm, I'm not, like, a huge potentiation guy, I think complex stuff from a motor learning perspective is awesome, so, you know, use it with, uh, super set with depth drops, or do a couple heavy centrics, and then, afterwards, you know, do some depth drops, supersetted with some like short sprints or bounds or actual jumps or something to that tune. Your body's going to like that a lot more. Um, and the last but not least, yeah, I said I wouldn't look at that again. That's the last one. Uh, you can get those adaptations like the fast twitch satellite cell deal. Uh, you can get that from like high altitude drops, uh, heavy plyometric type stuff. Okay. And there's a reverse transfer training that exists too. That stuff will make your squat stronger so long as you're not totally overloading yourself doing it, okay? And when it comes to something that's kind of the nitrous fuel aspect of training, I would much rather prefer like a high altitude, high depth drop to be thrown in there to spike that for two weeks rather than, you know, blowing up your strength training, which has less transfer than like a depth jump or altitude drop. All right, so that's about it. Um, super maxim maximal eccentrics, I think they're great for strength. Uh, if you are like, if you're in a track mindset though, I think they have a little bit, uh, just a little bit less transfer. Now it doesn't mean they're not good. Just be careful if you want to use them two weeks at a time, complex some of the other stuff. Uh, I think that's the best way to go about it. Help you max out your vert and, uh, you know, do the best you can in your uh, own athletic journey. So until next time, uh, this is Joel Smith, justflysports.com.